by Telcoma Technologies. So today we are going to discuss about introduction of technologies. Now as telecommunication is communicating over a long distance. So and this telecommunication like we have wireless. Over a long distance we can have wired but that requires a dedicated connection between the two ends. So we prefer wireless communication over a long distance we call it as a telecommunication. So as per the wireless technologies we have various generations like we started from the very first as 1G which is the first generation of wireless technologies we call it as telecom or telecommunications. So 1G has started the era that means from 1G we have started wireless communication between one end to another end. So first generation has technologies like we have NMT which is Nordic Mobile Telephony we have tax which is total access communication system then we have e-tax, which is European total access communication system. That means they started to have wireless communication between two ends. So they call it as this is the first generation of a wireless technology. Now in this 1G, what they prefer? They prefer analog signals that means all processing of analog signal like I am speaking so the waveform which I am radiating is the analog signal it is not being converted into the digital one because that is another error so 1G is the anal uses analog system, analog signal. Now as we know the disadvantage of analog signal that means they are not able to cover up the long distance. So we have the 1G generation. After that we have to move to the digital era. So for digital era we have second generation. That means 2G is a digital technology. It uses digital technology and the signals which it uses as digital signals that means they have converted analog signals to the digital one and digital to analog one so because digital signals are able to cover up a long distance that's why we have used a digital signal in a second generation now for second generation we have the technology as GSM so when it is was discovered its name is group a special module and after that when it was globally accepted so its name changed to global system for mobile communication because it became a global standard it become a global system and globalized so its name is global system for mobile communication and it is the very successful technology in the second generation for having voice communication so our dream that means to communicate over a long distance it is possible because of the gsm technology now we are communicating on 2g network and 2G voice that means we are using GSM technology and it is globally accepted for wireless voice communication with the name as GSM technology. Now GSM is the very first technology in the second generation. Now after that after voice our main name is data that means what we require we require from a server and we require data access. So we move to another technology we call it as that this is our 2.5 G. So we call the technology as GPRS. So GPRS stands for General Packet 
radio service. Now here we have radio service. Radio means air. That means packet transmission through air interface. No dedicated connection here in this case also. That means no use of LAN wire directly to the computer and accessing internet. We have to access internet through air. Air as a radio, radio service. So 2.5G is a general packet radio service. But the data rate here in this JPRS is very less. So we require to, to have more data rate. So we have 2.75G. Call it as 2.75G with the name as Edge. Edge. Now E stands for Enhanced Data Rate for GSN evolution that means we have increased the data rate from gprs we have increased the data rate in edge technology when we access gprs in our mobile device we have signed as g when we access edge we have signed with e so combinedly these all in under that means 2g 2.5g we call it as this is our second generation so when we have second generation in our handset, we have nowadays for words, we have GSM technology. For data, we have edge technology. So this is what our 2G is. And these are the technologies under second generation. But data rate here in this case are also not that much good because we require to evolve. We require to increase data, data rates. Evolution of voices with GSM, but after that we have a main evolution of increase in the data rates. So then we have 3G. 3G with the name of UMTS. UMTS stands for Universal Mobile Terrestrial or Telecommunications System. UMTS give us a data rate of 384 kbps. Whereas earlier for edge we have around 170 kbps and for GPRS we have 56 to 64 kbps that means now we can see that there is an increase in data rate what we require in our new generations so basically UMTS which is a 3G and this is also having a feature of video calling because what we require we have a voice calling now we have smartphones we can have video calling also that required more data rate that is offered by 3g now we have a set up a target like whenever we have one gigabit per second for stationary users and 100 mbps for high mobility users, we will call that this is our fourth generation. Why so much data rate is required? This data rate is required for like bullet trains. Whenever we are moving with High mobility, we require huge data rate. So in order to meet the requirement of the high mobility services, trains, bullet trains, we require huge data rate. So we set up a target that whenever we require this, we call it as this is a fourth generation. Now we are in third generation. That means we require to move ahead. So after this, we have 3.5G. We call it as this is my edges DPA which stands for high speed downlink packet 
axis. That means we have focused on the downloading speed because most of the users are downloading. So after that, we have an era of cloud computing. That means we have to work with upload speed also. So we have HSUBA2. HSUBA as high speed uplink packet access. So HSUBA and HSDBA under 3.5G. Now this is giving us an, around 2 Mbps. We have a target of this. So we have 3. Point, after that we move to 3.575G. So with the name of HSPA plus where plus will represent increased. This is high speed packet access. Now how speed packet access that means 3. Point, and after that we require 4 generation. From this we expected that now we will get 4 generation but we have 3.9G. We call it as LT. Where LT stands for long term evolution. That means evolution for a long term up so that we achieve this, which is what our target is fourth generation. So they launched 3.9G LT with the name of 4G LT so that we can earn the revenue and we can further use for the development or research of fourth generation. Now, we have achieved the 4G targets, that means 4G is successfully launched. We have achieved 1 gigabit per second and 100 Mbps. After that, now we have set a target for 5G. Now, this is to be commercial in 2020. We have set up a target for 5 gigabit per second. That whenever we are having 5 gigabit per second, we can say that we have 5th generation from 4G. Now we are working that right now we have research and development for the 5th generation. Many companies are working so that we can achieve this data rate. And in 2020, we have commercial 5G networks. So right now the scenario is research and development in 5th generation. We have multiple concepts which is there in the fifth generation to achieve this much data rate. So this is about introduction of technologies, telecom technologies, which we have. Now parallelly, that means in second generation, we have another technology also, which is CDMA. CDMA as code division multiple access. Now, this CDMA is worldwide very welcome. They have their own patent of the CDMA technology. This is this technology is prominent in some countries like US. Some countries are using GSM. But CDMA is also there in the second generation. After that, for 3G, we have a concept of this with WCDMA. We call it as wideband code division multiple access. That means we have used the concept of WCDMA in our 3G networks. So this is about introduction of the various telecom technologies. Thank you so much.